Welcome to lesson 9.6. In this video, we'll be applying our knowledge of parametric equations and vector valued functions to a motion context. On the AP Calc PC exam, your knowledge of parametric equations and vector valued functions is going to be assessed in the context of particle motion. Now, most of the formulas for particle motion you're already familiar with, but now we're just going to apply them to parametric equations and vector valued functions. So here are the important formulas to know. We need to know that velocity is the derivative of position and that acceleration is the derivative of velocity, aka the second derivative of position. Now the speed of a particle at any time t can be represented by the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared, or we can write those x primes and y primes as dx dt and dy dt. Displacement from time 1 to time 2 is going to be represented by the integral from time 1 to time 2 of v of t, the velocity dt. Now arc length, which is often going to represent total distance traveled, is the integral from time 1 to time 2 of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. Notice that the integrand is very similar to speed here, and that makes a lot of sense because if we're talking about the total distance traveled, in former lessons when we found the total distance traveled, we would take the integral of the absolute value of the velocity. This is essentially what we're doing. We're taking the integral of the speed, and because we have that square root on it, we don't even need to put the absolute value signs because anything that comes out of a square root, that's going to be a positive number. Now, if we're trying to find new position, we would take x of t2, the time at which we're trying to find that new position, and we would set that equal to x of time 1 plus the integral from time 1 to time 2 of v of t dt. We covered a few of those problems in lesson 9.5. One more, a particle is at rest when dy dt equals zero and dx dt equals zero. In this video, we're pretty much just going to be working through a whole bunch of applied multiple choice and free response questions related to this topic. For time t greater than zero, the position of a particle moving in the xy plane is given by the vector e to the power of 0.2t comma 3t to the fourth minus one. What is the velocity vector of the particle at time t equals five? If it gave us position and we're trying to find velocity, that means that we need to take the derivative of this vector. So we'll say v of t, which is going to be the derivative of that vector, will be, and then we take the derivative of the x component and the derivative of the y component. The derivative of this x component, the derivative of e to the power of 0.2t, is going to be 0.2 times e to the power of 0.2t. The derivative of the y component, 3t to the fourth minus 1, is going to be 12t cubed. Then it specifically asks for the velocity vector at time t equals 5. So we're going to say v of 5 is equal to, and then we'll plug in a 5 everywhere that we have a t. For instance, we'll do 0.2 times e to the power of 0.2 times 5, comma, 12 times 5 cubed. Then we can clean that up a bit. We'll say 0.2 e to the power of 1, or just a plain e, since 0.2 times 5 is 1, and then this is really going to be 12 times 125, which makes 1,500. Therefore, this means that choice A is our correct response. For time t greater than zero, the position of a particle moving in the xy plane is given by x of t equals e to the power of 4t and y of t equals 5 over t squared. What is the acceleration vector of the particle at any time t greater than zero? This one's a bit confusing because they gave us our equations in terms of x of t and y of t. They didn't give us it in vector format, but it asks for the acceleration vector. However, we can pretty easily make a position vector. The position of the particle at any time t greater than zero is going to be represented by the vector e to the power of 4t, comma, and then I'm going to write this as 5t to the power of negative 2 instead of 5 over t squared because I know I'm going to have to take the derivative. This means that if I'm trying to find the velocity vector, I need to take the derivative of this position vector. The derivative of e to the power of 4t is 4e to the power of 4t, and the derivative of 5t to the power of negative 2 is negative 10t to the power of negative 3. Now it's asking for the acceleration vector, so I need to take the derivative one more time. The derivative of 4e to the power of 4t is going to be 16e to the power of 4t, and the derivative of negative 10t to the power of negative 3 is going to be positive 30t to the power of negative 4. Now we could also write this as 16e to the power of 4t, comma, 30 over t to the fourth. This is going to match answer choice A. The position of a particle moving in the xy plane is given by the parametric equations x of t equals t cubed over 3 minus t squared minus 8t minus 1, and y of t equals t times t squared over 3 minus 7t over 2 plus 12. At which of the following times t is the particle at rest? In order for the particle at rest, we need dx dt and dy dt to be equal to 0. Let's begin by finding dx dt. If we take the derivative of this equation, derivative of t cubed over 3 is just going to make a t squared, then we'll have minus 2t minus 8. And if this needs to be equal to 0, we can factor that to get some values. 
So t squared minus 2t minus 8 is the same thing as t minus 4 times t plus 2. And if that's equal to 0, that means that we have the values t equals 4 and t equals negative 2. Now, these are the times when our x coordinate is not changing. But in order for the particle to be at rest, we also need that dy dt to be equal to 0. The first thing I'm going to do is distribute this t so that I can differentiate a little bit more easily without having to use the product rule. So we'll say y of t is equal to t cubed over 3 minus 7t squared over 2 plus 12t. Then I can find dy dt, differentiate this, and that's going to be t squared minus, let's see, that would be minus 7t plus 12. Then if this needs to be equal to zero, we'll say zero equals dy dt is equal to, and then I'm also going to factor this. That's going to be t minus three times t minus four. And then if I set both of those equal to zero, I'm going to get t equals three and t equals four. Now be very careful not to select answer choice C because that is just when our y coordinate is not changing. But we need to find these times when dx dt and dy dt are equal to zero. The only time that is shared between these two is this t equals four. Therefore, choice A is correct. Only at time t equals 4 is the, is the particle at rest. The position of a particle moving in the xy plane is given by the parametric equations x of t equals t to the fourth minus t squared minus 4 and y of t equals 3t squared minus t cubed. At which of the following points x comma y is the particle at rest? If we want to find the point where the particle is at rest, we have to find the time when the particle is at rest first. And remember that a particle is going to be at rest when dx dt and dy dt are both equal to zero. Let's begin by finding dx dt. That means that we differentiate this equation right up here, which would produce a 4t cubed minus 2t. Then we also need to find dy dt. dy dt, if we differentiate this equation, is going to be 6t minus 3t squared. Then we need to set both of these equal to zero. So we'll say equal zero, equal zero, and then we can do some factoring. For this dx dt equation, I'm going to factor out a 2t, and that means that we'll have 2t squared minus 1, and that's going to be equal to zero. So we could have 2t equals zero, or we could have 2t squared minus 1 equals zero. This means that we can either have t equals zero, or if we solve this one, we will get 2t squared equals 1, so t would be equal to plus or minus rad 1 half. Now we have to solve this equation. Let's factor out a 3t. This means that we would have 2 minus t, and that would be equal to 0. Then if we set each of these equal to 0, we would have 3t equals 0, which means that t equals 0. We would also have 2 minus t is equal to 0, which means that t is equal to 2. The only time that overlaps with both of these is going to be t equals 0. So that's the only time when our particle is going to be at rest. Now it says at which of the following points x comma y is the particle at rest. So now we have to figure out what's x of 0 and what's y of 0, because that will be our xy coordinate point. If we take x of 0, that's going to be 0 to the 4th minus 0 squared minus 4, so that minus 4 is the only thing that impacts our x. And then we also need to find y of 0. y of 0 is going to be 0, because if we plug in zeros for t's right there, we're just going to get 0. So our point is going to be negative 4 comma 0. That's the point when our particle is at rest. At time t is greater than or equal to zero, a particle moving along a curve in the xy plane has position x of t comma y of t, with velocity vector given by v of t equals 0.92t plus 5 comma e to the power of 0.4t. What is the total distance traveled by the particle from t equals 2 to t equals 5? Since the particle is moving along the position path with position x of t comma y of t for any time t greater than or equal to zero, that means that when it's asking us for the total distance traveled, it's asking us for the arc length from time t equals two to t equals five. Recall from lesson 9.3 that if we're trying to find arc length of a parametric equation, we take the integral from time one to time two, which in this case is gonna be from two to five, of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. Now in this case, dx dt, the derivative of x of t, that's going to be this component, this x component of our velocity, because velocity we know is the derivative of position. So the x prime of t, or the dx dt, the derivative of that x is going to be 0.92t plus 5, and we need to square that entire thing. Then we add the derivative of the y component, which is going to be e to the power of 0.4t, and that also gets squared. So now we've set up our arc length integral correctly. Now we just have to plug this into the graphing calculator to get an actual numerical answer. Use math 9 to get an integral, go from 2 to 5, and then don't forget to put the square root on there. Then you can enter these equations. It's going to put an x there instead of a t, which is completely fine. And it says the answer is equal to 27.973.
So that's the total distance the particle traveled from time t equals 2 to t equals 5. This matches answer choice B. At time t is greater than or equal to 0, a particle moving in the xy plane has velocity vector given by v of t equals 3t comma t cubed. If the particle is at the point 2 comma negative 6 at time t equals 0, how far away is the particle from the origin at time t equals 2? If we want to find the distance of the particle from the origin at time t equals 2, we probably have to find what point is the particle at at time t equals 2, which would require us to find x of 2 and y of 2. To find x of 2, we know that we were given x of 0 because at time t equals 0, we were at the point 2 comma negative 6. So x of 2 is going to be equal to x of 0 plus, and then we're going to integrate from 0 to 2 of x prime of t dt. Now, we know that x of 0 is 2, so we'll replace that with a 2. And then if we're integrating from 0 to 2 of x prime of t dt, what's x prime of t dt? Well, the derivative of the position, or the x component of the position, is going to be this, the x component of the velocity, which is that 3t. So we're integrating from 0 to 2 of 3t dt. This can be solved pretty easily. This would be equal to 2 plus, and then we take the antiderivative of 3t, which would be 3t squared over 2 evaluate that at 0 and 2, that's going to be equal to 2 plus, and then we plug in 2 and subtract plugging in 0. Now if we plug in 0, we're going to get 0, so we'll just plug in 2 right here. This is going to be 3 times 2 squared over 2. Then we just have to evaluate that. 2 squared is 4, so we're looking at 3 times 4, or 12, over 2, which is really making a 6. So this is 2 plus 6, or 8. So we know that x of 2 was equal to 8. Now let's find y of 2 using that same principle. So y of 2 is going to be equal to y of 0, which they gave us. It's negative 6, plus the integral from 0 to 2 of y prime of t dt. Now this one, we know y of 0 is negative 6. So we'll say it's equal to negative 6, plus the integral from 0 to 2 of, and then y prime of t dt is going to be this t cubed. That would be negative 6 plus, and then we take the antiderivative of t cubed, which is going to be t to the fourth over 4, and we evaluate that at 0 and 2. Remember, if we plug in 0, that's going to give us nothing. So we'll just plug in 2 right here. We'll have negative 6 plus 2 to the 4th over 4. Now 2 to the 4th is going to be 16. So we have negative 6 plus 16 fourths, or negative 6 plus 4, which makes a negative 2. So let's think about what point the particle is at at time t equals 2. When t equals 2, our particle is at the point x of 2 comma y of 2, which we know is going to be 8 comma negative 2. Now, what it's really asking us is it's saying how far away is the particle from the origin? So what's the distance between the points 0, 0 and 8, 2? You could use the distance formula, but here you really just need to use the Pythagorean theorem. Think about if you have this tiny coordinate plane, 0, 0, and then you have 8, 2. This distance of the triangle would be negative 2. This leg of the triangle would be 8. And what you're looking for is the hypotenuse right there, which we'll just call x. So if we set up the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that would be 8 squared plus 2 squared is equal to x squared. This means that we would have 64 plus 4 is equal to x squared, so x is equal to rad 68. Then that can be simplified. 68 divided by 4 is 17, so we can remove a 2 right there. We would say that is equal to 2 rad 17. This matches answer choice A. Let's try a calculator-free response question. For t greater than or equal to 0, the position of a particle in the xy plane is given by the vector r of t equals cosine t of 2t comma 3t cubed minus t squared plus 4. Part A asks us to find the velocity vector for any time t being greater than or equal to 0. If we're trying to find the velocity vector, all we have to do is take the derivative of this position vector. The derivative of this x component, which is cosine of 2t, is going to be negative 2 times the sine of 2t. The derivative of the y component, 3t cubed minus t squared plus 4, is going to be 9t squared minus 2t. And that's all we have to do for part A. Part B asks us to find the acceleration vector at time t equals 2. So now we're not just going to have equations with t's in them, we're going to have an actual vector with actual numbers plugged in there because we're finding it at time t equals 2. We're going to let a of t represent the acceleration vector. And that's going to be the derivative of our velocity vector, so v prime of t. Now the velocity vector, I'm also just going to add on here that that's equal to v of t so that we know what we're taking the derivative of. That would be equal to, and then we have to take the derivative of this x component and the y component. The derivative of the x component is going to be negative 4 times the cosine of 2t. The derivative of the y component is going to be 18t minus 2. Then we are asked for the acceleration vector at time t equals 2. 
So we're going to find a of two, which means that we plug in a two right here, negative four times the cosine of two times two, or four, comma, 18 times two minus two. Then we can use the calculator to get an actual value for the cosine. Negative four times the cosine of four makes 2.6145. And if we're rounding to three decimals, we'll say 2.615. And 18 times 2 makes a 36, so 36 minus 2 is going to make a 34. That would be our acceleration vector at time t equals 2. Let's try part c, which asks us to find the speed of the particle at time t equals 2. To find the speed of the particle at time t equals 2, we need to take the square root of dx dt, the derivative of the x component, squared, plus the derivative of the y component squared. And we would take the derivatives of the x and y components at t equals 2 specifically. So if we're trying to find the derivative of the x component, we already got that down here. It's this negative 2 times the sine of 2t. So we're going to take negative 2 times the sine of, and then instead of just writing 2t, we'll write 2 times our actual t value, which is going to wind up being 4. So we'll take that squared plus, and then we take the derivative of the y component. This is our y component. This is the derivative of the y component at t equals 2 squared. So we'll take 9 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2, and we'll square that entire thing. And then we can get the calculator to give us a value for that. That's equal to 32.036 if we round. So that would be the speed of the particle at time t equals 2. Part D says find the time at which the slope of the line tangent to the particle's path is negative 3. The slope of the tangent line is always represented by dy dx. And remember, when we're dealing with anything involving parametric equations or vector valued functions, we have to get that in terms of t. So instead of writing dy dx, we would represent that as dy dt over dx dt. Now we already know what dy dt is because we took the derivative of this y component up in part a. It's going to be 9t squared minus 2t. Then for the derivative of the x component, we also know that because this was our x component and this was the derivative. So we have negative 2 times the sine of 2t. And we need this to be equal to negative 3 because it says find the time at which the slope of the line tangent to the, to the particle's path is equal to negative 3. Now, how are we going to do this on the graphing calculator? Let's come up with two equations. We'll input y equals this and y equals this. Now, if you really want, you could switch the calculator over to parametric mode by going to the mode button, but that simply isn't necessary here. You can do it with x and y's just fine. Let me clear out these old functions and then we'll put in the new ones. So for our first function, we will do 9x squared minus 2x, and then we're going to be dividing that all by negative 2 times the sine of 2t, or 2x in this case. Then for the second function, we'll put negative 3 down there. Then let's adjust the window. I'm going to go from negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis and negative 10 to 10 on the y-axis. All right, now we have to figure out what's that point of intersection. So we can hit the second calc button right up there, and we're trying to find number 5, the intersection. Our first curve, we'll move the cursor over to that first curve, and then it will go to the second curve, and then we'll hit enter, hit enter one more time, and it's going to give you your value. x equals 0 0.920. So we're going to say this is true when t equals 0 0.920. That's the time at which the slope of the line tangent to the particle's path is negative 3. Let's try another calculator for your response question. At time t is greater than or equal to 0, a particle moving along a curve in the xy plane has position x of t comma y of t with velocity vector v of t equals cosine of t squared comma e to the power of 0.5 t. At t equals 1, the particle is at the point 3 comma 5. Part a asks us to find the x coordinate of the particle's position at time t equals 2. If we're looking for x of 2, that means that we're going to set that equal to x of whatever starting time they gave us, which they gave us at t equals 1. The particle is at, at the point 3 comma 5. So we'll say x of 1. And then we're going to add the accumulation, so the integral from 1 to 2, of x prime of t dt. Now in this case, we know exactly what x prime of t dt is going to be equal to. If this is our original x of t, this cosine of t squared is our x prime of t dt. So for x of 1, well, we know x of 1 is 3, so this is going to be equal to 3 plus that integral from 1 to 2 of the cosine of t squared dt. Then we can use the calculator to get an actual value for this. So I'll say 3 plus, and then to get an integral, do math 9, integrate from 1 to 2, and we're trying to find the cosine of t squared. Here we're using x, but that's practically the same thing here. And that's going to be equal to 2.556. Now if we round, it would be 2.557. So we'll say this is equal to 2.557. That's what x of 2, the x-coordinate of the particle at time t equals 2, is equal to. Let's try part b. 
For zero less than t less than one, there is a point on the curve at which the line tangent to the curve has a slope of two. At what time is the object at that point? If we're talking about the line tangent to the curve or the slope of the tangent line, remember that that always refers to dy dx. But when we're dealing with parametrics or vector valued functions, we typically switch that over to dy dt over dx dt so that we can incorporate that time somewhere. Now here, we know that dy dt is going to be e to the power of 0.5t because that's our velocity vector. And the e to the power of 0.5t gives the rate of change of the y component. The cosine of t squared is going to give the rate of change of the x component. Now we need this to be equal to 2, and we just have to figure out at what value of t is that going to happen. So let's graph this equation and the equation y equals 2 to see when they intersect. Remember, we're using x as t in the calculator. In our numerator, we're going to have e to the power of 0.5x, and then we'll divide that by the cosine of x squared. And for the second equation, we'll say that's equal to 2. Now when we adjust the window, it specifically says that this is happening for 0 less than t less than 1. So I'm going to switch my x to be from 0 to 1. And for my y, I guess I'll go from negative 5 to 5 right now and see if that's a sufficient window. That window looks perfect because I can clearly see my point of intersection. Then to figure that out, I'll hit second and then calc right up here or the trace button. Go to number 5, the intersection, hit enter for the first curve, enter for the second curve, enter one more time, and it gives us the value of 0 0.840. So that's the time at which the line tangent to the curve has a slope of 2. So we'll say this happens when t is equal to 0 0.840. Part C says find the time at which the speed of the particle is 3. To find speed, we know that we can take the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. Then we can plug in dx dt as cosine of t squared and dy dt as e to the power of 0.5t. So for dx dt, we say cosine of t squared, and that entire thing gets squared, plus e to the power of 0.5t, and that entire thing gets squared. And we're looking for this to be equal to 3. This is another situation where we're going to graph the two lines and see when they intersect. So for y equals, we'll go back up here and delete these original equations. Then for y1, I'm going to take the square root of the cosine of x squared, and then that entire thing is going to get squared, plus e to the power of 0.5x, and then that entire thing is going to get squared. Then for my y2, I'm going to put a 3. Now, it didn't give me a specific window for this question, so I'm just going to go from negative 5 to 5 right now, and I'll do the same thing for the x and the y and see if that's an appropriate window. To find the point of intersection, I'll hit second, trace, then scroll down to number 5, which is going to allow you to find the point of intersection, hit enter for the first curve, enter for the second curve, and enter one more time. Then it gives you the value t equals 2.195. If we round, that would be 2.196. So we will say that this occurs when t equals 2.196. That's the time at which the speed of the particle is 3. For part d, it says find the total distance traveled by the particle from time t equals 0 to time t equals 1. Since the particle is moving along this curve, what it's really asking for is the arc length from time t equals 0 to t equals 1. To find the total distance, I'll set up my integral. I use the integral for arc length, which is going to be from my starting time to the ending time, in this case from 0 to 1, of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. Now, this is the same exact thing that I had up here. I'm just putting an integral on the front now. So I can just copy down exactly what I had here, which was the cosine of t squared, and that all gets squared, plus e to the power of 0.5t, all squared, with a dt on the end this time. Then I can get the calculator to give me a value for this. Use math 9 to go to the integral setting, and then we're integrating from 0 to 1. And in this case, since I already have this exact thing plugged in in y1, I'm just going to say vars, and then scroll over to y vars, hit number 1, and hit number 1 again to get y1, which is this square root thing, in there. Then I'm, gonna, then I'm just going to say dx, because y1 is in terms of x right now, and that's going to get me 1.595 if I round. That would be the total distance traveled by the particle from time t equals 0 to t equals 1. There's my complete response.